Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to learn the clauses. A clause is a group of words that includes a subject and a verb. It may be a sentence or a part of a sentence. There are three kinds of clauses in English. Noun clause, adverbial clause and relative clause. We also call it adjective clause. In this video, we are going to learn all of these with the definitions, with some examples and their functions in detail. Let us learn now the noun clause, its definition and its function with some examples. The noun clause answers the question what. The noun clauses begin with the following connectives, pronouns, adverbs and conjunctions. Let us learn some examples by using the pronouns. Example 1. You can see what you have done. Example 2. Can you tell me who had done it? Example 3. Do we know whose car is it? Example 4. I don't know which book he has bought. Example 5. I can't say whom I should believe. Some examples using adverbs. Example 1. I can't tell you when he will come. Example 2. Please tell me why he is always late. Example 3. I don't know where he has gone. Example 4. Does anyone know how it has happened? Some examples by using conjunctions. I wonder if the weather is going to be alright. Example 2. She asked whether the train will leave on time. Example 3. I can tell you that he's a good boy. We are going to now learn some functions of noun clause in detail with some examples. Noun clauses function like nouns or noun phrases. They can function as subject, object, complement or object of a preposition etc. Subject. Some examples. Example 1. What you said surprised me. Example 2. When she will come is uncertain. Example 3. Whether he will help you will be known soon. Example 4. That he would come is seemed unlikely. How he crossed the border is a mystery. Example 6. Why he came here is still unknown to us, object of a verb. Example 1. He says that he will help me. Example 2. He couldn't decide what she should do. Example 3. You must learn when you should speak. Example 4. She wondered whether she should stay anymore. Example 5. I don't know who gave him this advice. Example 6. Have you decided where will you go for your holidays? Example 7. I asked him, how can I reach that village? Example 8. I don't know why he sold his house. Let us learn some examples with complement of the verb. Example 1. Our belief is that he will help us. Example 2. This is where she works. Example 3. My worry is why he should behave like that. Example 4. This is what you are looking for. Example 5. The problem is how we can cross this river. Let us learn some examples of object of a preposition. Example 1. You should pay attention to what the teacher says. Example 2. There is no complaint except that he comes late. Example 3. There is no meaning in what he says. Example 4. No one is aware of how he has opened the lock. Example 5. Everything depends on whether he helps us or not. Example 6. It was difficult to decide on where we should go for help. Example 7. They couldn't agree about who should do the work. 
some examples of complement of an adjective. Example 1. I am not sure where he has gone. Example 2. They are confident that they will find out the thief. Example 3. It is doubtful whether she will reach in time. Let us learn some examples of object of an infinitive. She wants to know what is going on here. Example 2. He came to see that he was mistaken. Example 3. She wanted to ask if I would help her. Let us learn some examples in opposition to a noun. Means noun plus a noun clause. Example 1. The rumor that he was killed is true. Example 2. The idea that we should set up a factory should be pursued. Example 3. The fact that he has failed surprised his parents. Let us learn some examples of object of a participle. Example 1. Thinking that he would die, they took him to a hospital. Example 2. Hoping that they would win, they felt overjoyed. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, we are going to learn the clauses. A clause is a group of words that includes a subject and a verb. It may be a sentence or a part of a sentence. There are three kinds of clauses in English. Noun clause, adverbial clause, and relative clause. We also call it adjective clause. In this video, we are going to learn all of these with the definitions, with some examples and their functions in detail. We are going to now learn the adverbial clauses of condition. The adverbial clauses of condition is introduced by if, unless and when. A conditional clause is a subordinate condition which expresses a condition in a sentence. Hi everyone, today we are going to learn the conditionals. We also call it if clauses. It's a part of the adverbial clause of conditions. Conditional sentences are used to speculate about what could happen, what might have happened, and what we wish would happen. In English, most of the sentences using the conditional contain the word if. Conditionals also express a possible condition, a hypothetical condition, and an unreal past condition and their probable results. There are five main ways of constructing conditional sentences in English. In all cases, these sentences are made up of an if clause and a main clause. In many negative conditional sentences, there is an equivalent sentence construction using unless instead of if. There are five types of conditionals in English. Zero type, which talks about general truths, real and possible situations. Type 1, it's an open condition, which talks about probable or possible condition in the present. Type 2, a hypothetical condition or an imaginary condition or an improbable condition. Type 3, an impossible condition or an unreal past condition or an unfulfilled condition. Finally, the mixed type, an unreal past condition and its probable result in the present and in the past. Spotlight. Whenever you see an if clause at the beginning of the sentence, you must put a comma after it. But if you see or if you use a main clause first, you do not need a comma. Now let us learn the construction of zero type condition and its uses. Zero type conditionals. Let us see the form of it. In zero conditionals, the tense in both parts of the sentence is the simple present. There are two parts in zero conditional sentence. The if or when or unless clause and the main clause. The if or when or unless clause is the conditional and the main clause is the result of the if clause. Let us learn the structure of zero conditionals. Structure or the tense we call it. 
subordinate clause or we also call it if clause. Let us see the form of it in the main clause of it. We can use if, when or unless to express zero condition. The subordinate clause or if clause formula is subject plus first form of the verb. We also call it v1 form plus object. We also call it the simple present form. Main clause the result subject plus first form of the verb we also call it v1 form plus object the simple percent sometimes we also can use imperative sentences in zero conditions let us learn some examples if you heat ice it melts ice melts if you heat it in the first example if clause has started at the beginning of the sentence so i added a comma after it in the second example, main clause has started in the beginning, so I don't need to add a comma after it. Let us learn the function of the zero conditional. It is used to make statements about the real world, a routine, a habit, often refers to general truths or scientific facts. It also gives instructions or strong advice. In these sentences, the time is now or always and the situation is real and possible. Let us learn some examples of it. If you freeze water, it becomes a solid piece. Example 2. Plants die if they don't get enough water. Example 3. If the public transport is efficient, people stop using their cars. Example 4. If you mix red and blue, you get purple. Example 5. If you don't water plants, they die. The zero conditional is also often used to give instructions using the imperatives in the main clause. Let us learn the structure and some examples of it. The subordinate clause and the main clause as we have learned in the previous. Let us learn some examples of it. If Rakesh phones, tell him to meet me at the Inox. Example 2. Ask Praveen if you are not sure what to do. Example 3. If you want to come, call me before 5 pm. Example 4. If it's cold outside, wear a jacket. Example 5. If I am late for dinner, they start eating without me. Unless means the same as if not. It also used in zero conditionals. Let us see the format and some examples with unless. The format is same as we have learned earlier. Let us learn some examples of it. Example 1. Unless he asks you politely, refuse to do any more work on the project. Example 2. Unless you mix red paint in yellow paint, you don't get orange paint. Example 3. We go to work tomorrow unless something unexpected happens. Example 4. The garden party is on unless it rains. When is also used instead of if in only zero conditions. Let us learn the formula and some examples of it by using when. The formula is same as we have learned earlier. Let us learn some examples. Example 1. When you heat ice, it melts. Ice melts when you heat it. Example 2. When people eat too much, they get fat. Example 3. When you travel to Andhra Pradesh, go to RK Beach. Example 4. When I don't clean my room, my mom gets angry. Let us learn now type 1 conditional and its sentence constructions and its function or uses. Type 1 conditional. Let us learn the form and the sentence structure and the functions of type 1 conditional. In a type 1 conditional sentence, the tense in the if clause is in the simple present and the tense in the main clause is in the simple future. Type 1 conditional refers to a possible condition and its probable result. 
Conditional type 1 talks about real situations and facts that are really likely to happen. These sentences are based on facts and they are used to make statements about the real world and about the particular situations. We often use such sentences to give warnings. In type 1 conditional sentences, the time is the present or future and the situation is real. Let us learn the structure of type 1 conditional. It has two clauses, if clause and the main clause. The if clause can have all the present tenses in English grammar like present simple, present continuous, present perfect and present perfect continuous. Main clause. The main clause have the future simple tense or have the modal verbs like can, may, might, must, should, and could, etc. Let's learn some formulas of type 1 conditional. Simple present plus simple future tense. Simple present plus modal verbs. Simple present plus be going to. Simple present plus imperative sentences. It also used with present continuous tense plus simple future. Present perfect plus modal verbs. Present perfect plus simple future. It, it also used with some adjectives. If plus some adjectives. Simple present plus some imperatives. Let us learn some examples by using simple present plus simple future formula. Question 1. I see him, I shall give him his gift. If I see him, I shall give him his gift. Question 2. Hurry up, you can catch the last bus. If you hurry up, you can catch the last bus. Question 3. Do it now or I won't let you play. If you do it now, I will let you play. We also can express this in another way. If you don't do it now, I won't let you play. Let us learn some examples by using the formula simple present plus model verbs. Some examples. Example 1. If you behave yourself, you can come to the party. Example 2. If the weather improves, we shall go for a walk. If the weather improves, we can go for a walk. If the weather improves, we may go for a walk. Example 3. If you promise to be careful, you can drive my car. Example 4. If you come, you can see him. Example 5. If I arrive early, I might take a stroll around the park. Example 6. If I have time, I might make a cake. Let us learn some examples by using the formula simple present as be going to. Example 1. If you don't study hard, you are going to fail. Example 2. If you don't leave now, I'm going to miss the flight. Example 3. If you don't come today, you're not going to see him again. Example 4. If she is not ill, she is going to come tomorrow. Let us learn some examples by using the formula simple present plus some imperatives. We use the imperatives to give instructions or advice. Example 1. If you need anything, just ask me. Example 2. If you see Arun, tell him he needs to come to my office. Example 3. If you go to Australia, send me a postcard. Example 4. If you travel abroad, remember your passport. Example 5. If you have a few hours to spare, you may visit the museum. Example 6. If you don't feel well, you should consult a doctor. Let us learn some examples with the structure present continuous plus simple future. Example 1. If we are leaving soon, I shall get my coat. Example 2. If you are exercising every day, you will lose your weight and get fit. Example 3. If it is snowing, we shall stay at home. Example 4. 
If the kids are enjoying themselves, we shall let them go on playing. Let us learn some examples by using the formula present perfect plus modal verbs. The present perfect in the if clause of a sentence in the first conditional emphasizes that one action depends upon the completion of other. The if by then of the first clause establishes the future context. So any present tense verb form will work to express a future condition. Let us learn some examples by using present perfect and the modal verb. Example 1. If I have seen the movie by then, I'll tell you about it. Example 2. If it hasn't rained by then, we have to irrigate the crops. Example 3. If I have finished writing my paper by tonight, I'll go out with my friends. Let us learn some examples by using the formula present perfect plus simple future. Example 1. If I have had my coffee, I'll think better. Example 2. If the road has been built by then, we will drive on it. Example 3. If he has finished his work, he will be able to come with you. Many words and expressions can be used with a similar meaning to if. Some common examples. Unless. Suppose. Supposing. What if. Providing. Provided that. As long as, so long as, on condition that, only if, should you, with inversion, whether or not, even if, in case, in the event of, or, and otherwise. We are going to learn these all with their meanings. And with some examples. Conditional clauses can begin with unless. Unless means something similar to if not or except if. The verb forms in the examples are similar to sentences with if. We use the present simple in the unless clause and shall, should, will, would, can, could, may or might in the main clause. Let us learn some examples. Example 1. Unless I phone you, you cannot assume the train is on time. The meaning is if I don't phone you or except if I phone you, you can assume the train is on time. Example 2. We'll have to cancel the show unless we sell more tickets at the last minute. The meaning is, we'll have to cancel the show if we do not sell more tickets, except if we sell more tickets at the last minute. Example 3. Unless he is physically fit, he won't be recruited. Example 4. I won't go on a holiday unless I save some money. Let us learn the definition of suppose, supposing. What if with some examples? We normally use suppose or supposing at the beginning of a sentence to make someone imagine a situation. It means what would happen if or simply if imagining a situation. Suppose or supposing and what if can replace if mainly in everyday conversation and are often used without a main clause. Example 1. Supposing I got a job, I wouldn't be able to travel with you next summer. Example 2. Suppose she doesn't believe you. What would you do then? Example 3. Suppose. Supposing you win the lottery, what will you do? Example 4. Suppose. Supposing you cannot find a job, what will you do? Example 5. Supposing. I don't arrive till after midnight. Will the guest house still be open? Means imagine if I don't arrive till after midnight. Example 6. What if you are not accepted to university?
what will you do then let us learn some examples and the definition of provided provided that providing that we can use the expression provided providing that instead of if when we want to emphasize the condition that needs to be present that something can happen or be done providing that is more common in speaking provided that is more formal and more common in written language let us learn some examples example 1 i'll lend you money provided that you pay me back next month example 2 you can get a senior citizen's reduction providing you have got a railway card example 3 they may do whatever they like provided that it's within the law example 4 provided providing that the bills are paid tenants will not be evicted let us learn as long as so long as with its definition and some examples we can use the expressions as long as instead of if when we want to emphasize the condition that needs to be present so that something can happen or be done example 1 i'll tell you what really happened as long as you keep the secret example 2 you can stay here as long as you keep quiet example 3 you can play in the living room as long as you don't make a mess example 4 so long as a tiger stands still it is invisible in the jungle example 5 you can borrow the car so long as you don't drive too fast let us learn on condition that only if their definition with some examples we can use the expressions on condition that or only if instead of if when we want to emphasize the condition that needs to be present so that something can happen or be done only if makes the condition more restrictive if the if clause is first the subject and the auxiliary in the main clause are inverted example 1 they will speak to the press on condition that they remain anonymous sources example 2 she agreed on condition that she would not have to speak a line example 3 i'll come to the party on condition that you don't wear those ridiculous trousers example 4 the bank lent the company rupees 1 lakh on condition that they repaid the money within 6 months some examples of only if example 5 we will invest the money but only if you can prove that it is a safe investment example 6 lavanya will eat the fruit only if it is an apple only if you like classical music it is worth coming tonight let us learn now should you with inversion its definition and some examples it is used in formal situations we can use should plus subject plus verb plus instead of if some example example 1 should you wish to cancel your order please contact our customer service department means or if you should wish to cancel your order example 2 should your child become anxious or nervous about any activity it is a good idea to inform the team leader if your child should become example 3 should you have any questions i will be happy to help example 4 marker pens are in the cupboard should you ever need one means marker pens are in the cupboard if you ever need one example 5 should a customer wish to cancel their booking they should notify us within 7 days example 5 should a customer wish to cancel their booking they should notify us within 7 days let us learn whether or not its definition with some examples we use whether or not when there are two alternatives and we want to say that something will happen or will be true in any of those two alternatives
Example 1. I'll help him whether or not he needs me. Means, I will help him if he needs me and I will help him if he doesn't need me to. Example 2. Whether or not it rains, I'm going to the park. Means, if it rains, I'm going to the park. If it doesn't rain, I'm going to park too. Example 3. Let me know whether or not you're going. Means, let me know whether you're going or not. Let us now learn even if with its definition and some examples. We also use even if with a similar meaning to whether or not. It is used to emphasize that something will still be true or will be even if emphasizes that something will happen, would happen or would have happened whatever the condition. Let us see some examples. Example 1. Even if you apologize, he will never forgive you. Means whether or not you apologize, he will never forgive you. Example 2. Even if we leave right now, we still won't catch the train. Example 3. I wouldn't go into the water even if I could swim. Let us learn now in case its definition with some examples. In case of implies a preventative action, a warning. We use in case of to talk about things that we do to be prepared for something that might happen or might be needed in the future. Example 1. I'll take my umbrella in case it rains because it might rain. Example 2. In case there is a fire emergency, employees should use the stairs to exit the building. Example 3. In case of the snow, make sure that you have warm cloths. Means take warm cloths because you might get snow. Example 4. In case of accidents, all cyclists have to wear a helmet. Since accidents are possible, all cyclists. Spotlight. Do not confuse in case of and in cases of or in the case of. While in case of should not be used to express a situation or condition that is already true. The plural form in cases of or the expression in the case of do exactly that. These two expressions are not common and are only used in specific contexts. For example, in cases of severe infection, patients need to be isolated when they are severely infected. Let us learn now in the event of with its definition and with some examples. In the event of expresses a situation where action and condition are both true. The action only occurs when the subordinate condition is true. Thus, a sentence using in the event of can often be rephrased using a simple conditional if clause. Example 1. In the event of fire, leave the building by the nearest exit. In the event of emergency, call the ambulance. Means Call the ambulance if there is an emergency. Example 3. In the event of victory, the team will go through the next round. Means if the team wins, it will go through the next round. Let us learn now one more expression, or and otherwise. We often use or and otherwise with conditional meanings. Example 1. You have to start studying or you will fail all those exams. Means, if you don't start studying, you will fail the exams. Example 2. We better send it by express mail, otherwise it will take many days. Means, if you don't send it by express mail, it will take a lot of days. Conditional 1. If and adjectives. In the conditional 1, if also used with some adjectives. In formal style, subject plus, P plus, is sometimes left out after if. Some examples. If in doubt, if possible, if necessary, etc. We can make the if clause shorter by omitting the subject and the verb be. Example 1. 
If in doubt, consult a dictionary. Means if you are in doubt, you can refer a dictionary or you can consult a dictionary. Example 2. If in doubt, ask for help. Means if you are in doubt, ask for help. It is also used in certain idiomatic expressions. The subject and be are normally omitted. Some examples. Example 1. If necessary, you can call Ramya at home. Example 2. I'd like a seat by the window if possible. Example 3. If interested, please let me know. Means if you are interested, please let me know. And finally, the type 1 conditional also used to express by using if so and if not. If so and if not can stand for an if clause which is understood from the context. Example 1. According to the weather forecast, it might rain tomorrow. If so, we will go hiking another day. Example 2. I hope Pravin gets here soon. If not, we will have to start without him. Let us learn now the type 2 conditional, its sentence constructions and its uses or we also call it the functions of it. In a type 2 conditional sentence, the tense in the if clause is the simple past and the tense in the main clause is the present conditional or the present continuous conditional or we also call it conditional past. Let us learn the sentence structure of type 2 condition. If clause, we also call it subordinate clause and the main clause. If plus simple past plus present conditional or present continuous conditional or conditional past. Let us learn the function of it. The type 2 conditional refers to an unlikely or hypothetical condition and its probable result. These sentences are not based on the actual situation. In type 2 conditional sentences, the time is now or any time and the situation is hypothetical. It also expresses an improbable or imaginary conditional sentence. Question 1. If I don't have money, so I cannot. Question 1. I don't have money, so I can't give you any. The if clause is, if I had money, I could give you any. Question 2. I don't have a car, so I can't give you a ride. The if clause is, if I had a car, I could give you a ride. Some more examples. Example 3. If the weather wasn't so bad, we would go to the park. Example 4. If I was the Prime Minister of India, I would give everything to everyone for free. We are going to learn some other different formulas in type 2. It is correct and very common to say if I were instead of if I was because it is in subjunctive mode. Here is a formula and sentence structure. If I were and we use in the main clause conditional past. Some examples. Example 1. If I were rich, I would buy this dress. Example 2. If I were 20, I would travel around the world. Example 3. If I were a plant, I would love the rain. The conditional clause refers to a situation that's not true at the present. And the result clause means the main clause refers to the outcome of the condition clause in the near future. The conditional clause uses a subjunctive verb were, or the past form of an action verb and the result clause uses the verb phrase would plus v1 means the first form of the verb. And note, the order of the clauses can be reversed too. The result clause can come in the beginning either. Let us learn some more examples. Example 1. If I were the PM of India, I would give every student a laptop for free. Example 2. If John were alive, he would love to see us on the big screen. Example 3. We would travel the world 
if we had a lot of money. Example 4. If I had her number, I would give it to you. Example 5. If you studied well, you would pass the test. Example 6. If my parents weren't at home, I would definitely come to the party. Example 7. If I were you, I wouldn't take the offer. In type 2 conditional sentences, we can also use models like would, could, may, might in the main clause instead of would to express the degree of certainty, permission or a recommendation about the outcome. Let us see the structure with some examples. The structure is if clause or we also call it subordinate conjunction. If clause or we also call it the subordinate clause. If plus simple past in the main clause with some models. Example 1. We might buy a larger house if we had more money. Example 2. He could go to the concert if you gave him a ticket. Example 3. If he called me, I couldn't hear. Example 4. She could join us if she came back. Example 5. If you taught her, she might pass the exam. Example 6. He may help us if he had money. Some more additional usages of type 2 conditional sentence. It is used to give advice. One of the most common usages of type 2 conditional sentence is to give someone advice. Imagine yourself in their situation. Example 1. If I were you, I wouldn't hide this from my father. Example 2. If we were you, we wouldn't take the offer. Example 3. If I were you, I would not leave this job and go for higher education. Example 4. If you were clever, you would understand what I meant. Type 2 conditionals is also used to give the reason for a situation. Here, we justify a present situation by laying down a condition and its results. Let's say, you asked me to come to your place and I said I can't make it. Now I can give reasons why I couldn't come. We do this by taking above the hypothetical condition or situation in which is impossible. Let us see some examples with some situations and justification. Situation, I can't come to your place. If my parents weren't outside, I would come to your place. The sentence lays down the reason why I can't come. Also, it shows the scenario in which it's possible. Situation 2. I won't work in your company. The answer is, I would work in your company if someone weren't working there. Situation 3. I will lend you some money. The answer is, if I didn't have enough money, I wouldn't lend you some. Type 2 conditional sentence also is it to make a polite request or check if someone is okay with you or someone doing something means a permission. It is common to use the type 2 conditional sentence to politely make request or check if someone is okay with something or action. Some examples. Example 1. Would you mind if I used your laptop for a day? Taking permission. Example 2. Would you be bothered if I asked you to move a little? Request. Example 3. Would it be a problem if I asked you to take a picture of us? Request. Example 4. Would you have a problem if we changed our seats? Example 5. Would you mind? If we offered your parents to have tea with us, taking permission. It is also used to dream about a situation that is impossible or unlikely in the present or the near future. Using type 2 conditional sentence is a way to think about something that is not real or possible for you. Let us see some examples of it. If I had a lot of money, I would buy a lot of cars. Example 2. If I studied in an English medium school, 
I will be fluent in English. Let us learn some negative sentences. In a negative type 2 conditional sentence, both or either one of the two clauses has to be negative. Some possible structures. Negative conditional clause plus positive result clause. Positive conditional clause plus negative result clause. Negative conditional clause plus negative result clause. Note that the order of the clause note that the order of the clauses can be reversed let us see some examples example one if i weren't your brother they would take me in their team example two you wouldn't get the entry if they saw you with a dog example three if the company offered me anything less than a million dollars i would take it example four he would not sell his car if he hadn't need money. Example 5. If you weren't his partner, you wouldn't be dragged into this case. Example 6. If I woke up late, I wouldn't be aware of what happened. Example 7. If my mother did not remind me, I would forget my worksheet at home. Example 8. If she were angry, she would not talk to us. Interrogative sentences. Interrogative sentences here in type 2 conditional sentences are used when you want to make a request or want to know how someone would do in a certain hypothetical situation. Let us see some examples. Example 1. Would it be okay with you if I parked my car in front of your car? Example 2. Would you mind if I closed the window? Example 3. Would she be bothered if I called her? Example 4. How would you react if she told your father your secrets? Example 5. Would you take me in your team if I passed the test? Example 6. What would happen if humans disappeared? Example 7. What would we do firstly if a fire broke out? Example 8. Would you cry if he left you? Example 9. What would happen if you did not drink water? Example 10. What would you do if you learned that you had a bad illness? Tenses and structures can be used in if clause type 2 are given below. In if clause, past form of to be, past continuous tense, should, could, and had to are also used. Here are some examples. Example 1. If she were cooking, I would help her. Example 2. If the sun were shining, I would go to the beach. Example 3. If Sam were sitting here, we would be able to ask him the question ourselves. 4. We would be able to go to sailing if the wind were blowing. Example 5. If it wasn't raining, we would have lunch outside. Example 6. If we were staying at the hostel, we wouldn't have such a nice view of the river. Many words and expressions can be used with a similar meaning to if. Supposing. We use supposing when we want someone to imagine something is true or to imagine a particular thing will happen. We can use this word in both the first conditional and the second conditional constructions. Supposing may be used with a conditional meaning. It can be used in the first, second or third conditional sentences. The speaker invites the listener to imagine a situation. Let us learn some examples. Example 1. Supposing. Suppose you lost your passport. You would have to go to the embassy, wouldn't you? Example 2. Supposing. Suppose I forgot the number. I would ask my mother to remind me. Example 3. Supposing I got a job. I wouldn't be able to travel with you next summer. Example 4. Suppose. Supposing you won the lottery. 
what would you do example 5 supposing suppose that i won a lottery i would buy a bmw car example 6 suppose he needed my help i would not refuse provided that we can also use the word provided to express a conditional idea it means on the conditional that on their way to say this if something happens just like supposing it's also possible to put the word that after it but it isn't necessary some examples example one i would be very worried provided that were the case example two providing that you went to the party i would go to you on condition that let us learn some examples example one do you want me to pay in advance i would pay in advance on condition that i got a discount example two he agreed to work on saturdays on condition that he was paid over time example three i would recommend it to all ages on condition that they have watched the other two films of this series let us learn something about were we to announce we can also find cases of inversion with the structure were a subject plus two plus infinity it is used to talk about the future improbable events some examples were we to announce the truth we would receive a lot of criticism example 2 for there to buy a new house they would need to sell the old one first let us learn some negative forms by using should i not had we not were we not when should had or were or negative contrasted forms are not possible and and not is used after the subject some examples example 1 should you not wish to retake the test you must let us know before the end of june example 2 had you not refused my invitation we would have had the most incredible time in our lives example 3 were you not my brother i would call the police let us learn now the type 3 conditionals and its sentence construction and its uses type 3 conditional the third conditional is used to imagine a different past we imagine a change in a past situation and a different result of that change let us learn the form and some functions of it in a type 3 conditional sentence the tense in the if clause is in the past perfect form and the tense in the main clause is the perfect conditional or the perfect continuous conditional here is the table of it function the type 3 conditional refers to an impossible condition in the past and its probable result in the past these sentences are truly hypothetical and unreal because it is now too late for the condition or its result to exist there is always some implication of regret with type 3 conditional sentences the reality is the opposite of or contrary to what the sentence expresses in type 3 conditional sentences the time is the past and the situation is hypothetical let us see some examples example 1 if i had worked harder i would have passed the exam example 2 if i had known you were coming i would have baked a cake example 3 i would have been happy if you had called me on my birthday in type 3 conditional sentences you can also use models in the main clause instead of would to express the degree of certainty permission and recommendation about the outcome let us learn some examples example one if i had worked harder i might have passed the exam example two you could have been on time if you had caught the bus example three 
If he had called you, you could have gone. Example 4. If you bought my school supplies for me, I might be able to go to the park. Both would and had can be contracted. 2. Apostrophe D. Which can be confusing if you are not confident with type 3 conditional sentences. Just remember two rules. The first one. Would never appears in the if clause. So if apostrophe D appears in the if clause, it must be abbreviating had. Rule number two. Had never appears before have. So if apostrophe D appears on the pronoun just before have, it must be abbreviating would. Let us learn some examples. Example one. If I had known you were in hospital, I would have visited you. Example two. I would have brought a present if I had known it was your birthday. Example three. If you had given me your email, I would have written to you. Had you had with inversion. In formal situations, we can use had plus subject plus verb instead of in the third conditional sentences. Example 1 Had I known you were waiting outside, I would have invited you to come in. Example 2 Had Monica realized if she would be traveling alone, she would never have agreed to go. Supposing in third conditional. Supposing may be used with a conditional meaning. It can be used in first, second or third conditional sentences. The speaker invites the listener to imagine a situation. Let us learn some examples. Example 1. He hadn't recognized us. He might never have spoken to us. When we refer to something that did not happen, we use the past perfect tense. Some examples. Example 2. Supposing they had closed the road, would that have been a good idea? Suppose I had accidentally told Maria about the party. That would have ruined the surprise. Let us learn now the mixed type conditionals and its sentence construction and some uses of it. Mixed conditionals. We use mixed conditional if we want to talk about the present and the past in the same sentence. The mixed type conditional is a conditional of the second and the third conditional. The mixed type conditional refers to an unreal past condition and its probable result in the present. These sentences express a situation which is contrary to reality both the past and in the present. In these mixed conditional sentences, the time is the past in the if clause and the present in the main clause. Note, we can use past simple or continuous in the if clause to refer the present or future and would, should, might have plus past participle in the main clause to refer the past. We can also use past perfect in the if clause to refer the past and would, should, might plus infinitive to refer the present. Some examples. Example 1. If I did not have so much work, I would have gone to the party last night. Example 2. If I spoke German, I would have understood them. Example 3. If I have won the lottery, I would be rich. Example 4. If I hadn't dropped the school, I could have a better job now. We are going to learn some examples by using different times. Let us see some examples by using the past and the present. Example 1. If I had won the lottery, I would be rich. Example 2. If I had taken French in high school, I would have more job opportunities. Example 3. If she had been born in the United States, she wouldn't need a visa to work here. Some examples by using the past and the future. Example 1. If she had signed up for the sky trip last week, she would be joining us tomorrow. Example 2. If Mark has gotten the job instead of Joy, 
he would be moving to America. Example 3 If Daniel hadn't wasted his Christmas bonus, he would go to Mexico with us next month. Some examples by using present and the past. Example 1 If I were rich, I would have bought that Ferrari we saw yesterday. Example 2 If Sam spoke Russian, he would have translated the letter for you. Example 3 If I did not have to work so much, I would have gone to the party last night. Some examples by using present and future. Example 1 If I did not have so much vacation time, I wouldn't go with you on the cruise to Alaska next week. Example 2 If Srinivas were more creative, the company would send him to New York to work on the advertising campaign. If Ganesh weren't so nice, he wouldn't be tutoring you in math tonight. Some examples by using future and past. Example 1 If I weren't going on my business trip next week, I would have accepted that new assignment at work. Example 2 If my parents weren't coming this weekend, I would have planned a nice trip to Araku Valley. Example 3 If she weren't making us a big dinner tonight, I would have suggested that we go to that nice restaurant. Let us learn some examples of future and present. Example 1 If I were going to that concert tonight, I would be very excited. Example 2 If Sandy were giving a speech tomorrow, she would be very nervous. Example 3 If Santos didn't come with us to the dessert, everyone would be disappointed. We are going to learn now the adverbial clauses of time. The adverbial clauses of time are used to say when something happens by referring to a period of time or to another event. The subordinating conjunctions after, before, since, when, while, whenever, till, as, etc. are used in the adverbial clauses of time. Let us learn some examples. Example 1. I arrived after he had started. Example 2. The patient had died before the doctor arrived. Example 3. I have never seen since she was 10 years old. Example 4. His father died when he was young. Example 5. Someone called while you were out. Example 6. Whenever I smiled, she smiled back. Example 7. I shall wait here till you return. Example 8. As I was leaving, the phone rang. When we refer to the present or the past, the verb in the time clause has the same tense that it would have in a main clause. Let us learn some examples. Example 1. She was standing by the door when I heard her speak. Example 2. I haven't talked to him since he arrived. Example 3. She looks after the children while she goes to school. When we mention an event in a time clause, which will happen before an event referred in the main clause, we use the present perfect tense in the time clause. Some examples. Example 1. When you have taken your lunch, you come to me. Example 2. Inform us as soon as you have reached here. We use when, while, as, when we refer to circumstances in which something happens or happened. Let us learn some examples. Example 1. The doors open when I press this button. Example 2. While he was in the house, there was a loud knock at the door. Example 3. I watched her as she combed her hair. We can use when, after, once to talk about one event happening immediately after another. Some examples. Example 1. When he died, his sons came to me for help. 
Example 2. The mother goes off in search of food after the eggs have hatched. Example 3. Once the damage is done, it takes many years for the system to recover. We use as soon as when we want to refer to one event happening after a very short time. Example 1. They heard a loud explosion as soon as they entered their house. When we use no sooner, the time clause begins with than. Some examples. Example 1. No sooner had he arrived than he had to leave again. Example 2. No sooner had he sat down than the phone rang. Example 3. No sooner had he asked the question than the answer came to him. When we use hardly, the time clause begins with when or before. Some examples. Example 1. Hardly had he returned the house when the phone rang. Example 2. She had hardly arrived when she had to leave again. Example 3. He had hardly opened his eyes before she asked him to leave. If we want to say that a situation stopped when something happened, we use till or until. Some examples. Example 1. I waited for her till or until she came back. Example 2. Let's wait till or until the rain stops. We use since to refer a situation that began to exist at a particular time and still exists. We use the past simple tense in the time clause. Some examples. Example 1. I have not met her since she was a child. Example 2. They have known to each other since they lived here. We are going to learn now the relative clauses. The relative clause does the function of an adjective in a sentence. This is why it is also called adjective clause. We put a relative clause immediately after a noun which refers to a person, thing or a group which we are talking about. Let us learn some examples. Example 1. The boy who came into the house was my friend. Example 2. The house which our neighbor brought is made of stone. A relative clause is essential to the clear understanding of the noun it defines or qualifies. For example, who came into the house is the relative clause, without which it will not be clear to which boy we are referring. There are two types of relative clauses, defining and non-defining relative clauses. Defining relative clauses limit the noun or pronoun to which they refer to a particular type of examples. They answer the questions which, what, whose. In the two example sentences above the relative clauses restrict the boy and the house to a particular boy or other particular house. Whereas the non-defining relative clause simply gives us additional information about the nouns or pronouns and clauses to which they refer. Let us learn one more example. Anwar, who returned yesterday, will come to meet us today. There are some general rules which should be noted about relative clauses and relative pronouns. Rule number one. A non-defining clause is separated by commas. Rule number two. A defining clause is not separated by commas. Rule number three. In a non-defining clause, the relative pronoun cannot be omitted. Examples Example 1. Satish, who, whom you met yesterday, is a friend of mine. Here the relative pronoun who, whom cannot be omitted. Rule number 4. In a relative clause, we can omit the relative pronoun except when it is the subject of a verb. Example 1. The woman you met yesterday is my mother. In this sentence, the relative pronoun is omitted, but we cannot omit in the following sentences. Example 2. The boy who gave you this book is my friend. This is because here the relative pronoun who is the subject of the verb gave. Rule number 5. 
In a non-defining relative clause, the preposition governing the relative is rarely placed at the end of the clause. Example, this is Mohan, but whom I was talking. Rule number 6. In a defining relative clause, the preposition governing the relative is generally placed at the end of the clause. Example 1. This is the boy I was talking about. Rule number 7. The relative pronouns which, who, whose, who are found in both defining and non-defining relative clauses. But the pronoun that is only found in defining relative clause. Rule number 8. The relative pronouns differ according to whether they refer to persons or things and according to their case. Rule number 9. Relative clauses are introduced by relative adverbs where, when, and why. Let us learn some examples of them. Example 1. This is the house where we lived. Example 2. This is the time when winter season sets in. Example 3. This is the reason why I left this place. Rule number 10. Use of pronouns for persons. In the nominative case, we use who or that. That is used after superlatives and after all, nobody, no one, somebody, someone, anybody, etc. When we can use either who or that. Let us learn some examples. Example 1. This is the best that I could have done in the situation. Example 2. The policeman who arrested the thief has white hair. Example 3. All who that listen to his speech prized him. In the objective case, we use whom, who, that. Whom is considered more formal than who. However, in spoken English, we use who or that. There is a tendency to omit the objective relative pronoun altogether. Let us learn some examples. Example 1. Example 1. The boy whom, whom I met is called Ramesh. Or the boy that I met is called Ramesh. The boy I met is called Ramesh. We use whom or that with a preposition. Generally, the preposition is placed before the relative pronoun. The boy whom I was speaking is my neighbor. In informal speech, the preposition is usually moved to the end of the class and then whom is often replaced by that or it is omitted. Let us learn some examples. Example 1. The man to whom I gave it was a foreigner. The man who whom I gave it to was a foreigner. The man that I gave it to was a foreigner. In a possessive case, we use the relative pronoun whose. Example 1. Boys whose result has not been declared can meet the principle. Rule number 11. Use of pronouns for things. In the nominative case, the relative pronouns which and that are used, which is considered more formal. Let us learn some examples. Example 1. This is the pen which that cost me 5 rupees. This is the house which that has been sold. In the objective case, we use which or that or omit the relative pronoun. Let us learn some examples. Example 1. The pen which that I bought yesterday was beautiful. The pen I bought yesterday was beautiful. We generally use that after all, much, little, everything, no and compounds of no or after superlatives or we omit the relative pronoun altogether. Examples Example 1. All the mangoes that fall are eaten by children. Example 2. This is the best place I have ever seen. When we use the objective case with a preposition, we place the preposition before which, but it is more usual to move it to the end of the class using which or that, or we omit the relative pronoun altogether. Examples Example 1 
The chair on which I was sitting was made of teak wood. The chair which that I was sitting on was made of teak wood. The chair I was sitting on was made of teak wood. In the possessive case, we use the relative pronoun whose. Examples. Example 1. The house whose walls are made of mud bricks will not be durable. We are going to learn now the non-defining relative clauses with some examples. Rule number 12. Relative pronouns used in non-defining clauses. Rule number 13. Use four persons. In the nominative case, only who is used. Examples. Example 1. My father, who is a businessman, has an expensive car. Example 2. Nitin, who is my friend, has gone to Dehradun. In the objective case, we use whom and who, who is sometimes used in conversation. Examples Example 1. My manager, whom I dislike, is an ill-tempered man. Example 2. He introduced me to his friend, whom I had known before. Whom is used with the preposition in the objective case. We can also use who if we move the preposition to the end of the clause. Examples Example 1 Sumitra, to whom I gave the present, is my sister. Sumitra, who I gave a present to, is my sister. We use whose in the possessive case. Examples Example 1 Shakespeare, whose plays are world famous, was a British dramatist. Rule number 14 Use for things. We use which in the nominative case. Examples. Example 1. His car, which is old, broke down on the highway. Example 2. His office, which is near to our house, is painted green. In the objective also, we use which. Examples. Example 1. The Merchant of Venice, which you read yesterday, was written by William Shakespeare. Example 2. The tree near my house, which I wanted to cut down, was uprooted in a stone. The relative pronoun which is also used with the preposition. Examples Example 1. My house, for which I paid rupees 50 lakhs, is beautiful. My house, which I paid rupees 50 lakhs for, is beautiful. In the possessive case, whose or of which are used. Some examples. Example 1. My house, whose walls are made of stone, faces east. Example 2. My chair, of which one leg is broken, is made of teak wood. Which can refer to a whole sentence. Examples. Example 1. I brought this compass, which helped me a lot. Example 2. A loud music was played near our house, which kept us awake throughout the night. Rule number 15. Relative adverbs. The relative adverbs when, where, and why are used to replace a preposition at the end of a relative pronoun which. When is used for time, it replaces in or on which. Where is used for place, it replaces in or at which. Why is used for reason, it replaces for which. Some examples. Example 1. That was the year in which this city was flooded. That was the year when this city was flooded. Example 2. This is the house in which he lived. This is the house where he lived. Example 3. This is the reason for which he was fined. This is the reason why he was fined.